First of all, you took over after this calamitous error, particularly on, on, on the glacier. But do you apologize for it on behalf of the IPCC? That's right. I became co-chair of Working mm. Group 2 of the IPCC in late 2008. Uh, when the IPCC learned that there was a problem with the estimate of the disappearance glade of Himalaya Himalayan glaciers, we looked at it very carefully and came out with a statement uh, indicating that the uh, report was incorrect on that as quickly as we could. Uh, tomorrow morning, though, in the Guardian newspaper on its front page, your boss, Pachenda Pachari, uh, says, I will not say sorry for the glacier error. Will you say sorry? Should he say sorry? The thing that's important to remember about the IPCC assessments is that they're the most ambitious, thorough, and successful science assessments that have ever been undertaken on any issue. Uh, they involve thousands of scientists, uh, more than 2,000 reviewers, uh, more than 90,000 review comments, a massive body of information. Um, we try to strive for a standard of zero mistakes, uh, and we have been overwhelmingly successful, but there are some mistakes that creep in. Uh, we regret those deeply. You do regret those deeply. Um, if I could just uh, come round to Professor Roger Pielke now. You specialize, specialize in the science of disasters. So basically, you know, the increasing economic cost against you know, the, the severity of weather disasters. But you were misrepresented. What happened? What were the, what were the consequences of that? Well, I'm one of the scholars who does fundamental research mm. that the IPCC cites in its reports. Uh, so it was with some surprise I saw in its, its most recent report that it had a graph showing a relationship between increasing temperatures and in the increasing cost of damages. That's surprising because there's no evidence in the literature to suggest that that relationship exists. Even more troubling, one of the expert reviewers for the IPCC uh, asked the IPCC to check with me to yeah. see what my views were on this uh, relationship. Uh, the IPCC responded that they thought I had changed my mind on this topic. Um, not only is that untrue, but I was never contacted I'm by the IPCC. I presume that's professionally damaging, potentially, for you. It's professionally damaging, but more importantly, it's, it's misleading to policymakers. Okay, here we have two things now. We have, let's say, the glacier thing. We, it goes from 35 years to nearly 300 years. And we have a misleading information for policymakers. And the professor, the specialist here, saying that the IPCC did not take his um, objections seriously. That's two major blunders. You know, the glacier issue is a, is a blunder. The issue with the cost of disasters is much more nuanced, as, as Roger knows. Uh, the, first of all, if you read the section in the report, you'll see that it indicates very clearly that the overwhelming driver of trends and disasters has been the increasing value of assets at risk. And the chapter concludes that there's one study that's indicated that there is a trend uh, through time and that uh, the evidence for that is... Uh, equivocal that if you take out Chinese floods or if you take out hurricanes in the United States, the effect this, goes this away. Is, this is the, uh, problem, the goal of I the IPCC is to provide a very nuanced, balanced view. And the but thing if it's that, wrong, that, it's the, if it's the um, wrong view, people need Roger to remember, says it's the wrong view, yeah, the, the, that's damaging to policy for policymakers. The, the problem is, is that if the IPCC uh, the, continues the, to defend the, the indefensible and not allow people to respond. Uh, it, it's only going to make things worse. This is not a nuanced topic. There's no ambiguity here. Anyone who takes a look at the literature, at what the IPCC does, it, it's not ambi well, ambiguous. Roger, but what do you say to the criticism in the film uh, there, that basically the criticism of the IPCC is designed to undermine it, uh, undermine it? The best defense for the IPCC is to be accurate and to re accurately reflect the scientific literature. There's no better defense than that. 